Well, welcome everybody to our podcast, Igniting Hope. And the title of the day's message is Reigning in Life. And we're going to do something that we don't usually do is have a guest. And I have a very special guest, the Igniting Hope Associate Director, Connie Jones, is with us. Welcome, Connie. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be on here with you. Yes. And we have some just great podcast listeners. You know, we, as you know, we love to go after what we believe, how we think. And there's nothing greater than, you know, just going into the word of God to help us with our thinking. And so, hey, before we get into this, Connie, um, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself, give a quick bio for those who might not know you. Yeah, so I'm Connie Jones. I, as Steve said, I work for Steve Backlund, for Wendy Backlund and this wonderful Igniting Hope Ministries. I've been with you guys for seven years on staff now, but I always lovingly say I've been a stalker for 10 years. So I've been following <laughs> and serving for a very, very long time. Um, I am married to a wonderful husband, Aaron Jones. I have three beautiful boys. They're actually all adults. I have an 18-year-old, a 21-year-old, and a 24-year-old now. Um, grew up in a pastor's house my whole life, ended up giving my life to Jesus, got radically saved, um, went to Bible school. It's where I met my husband. And then kind of the rest is history. We ser we've we been serving in the church as pastors, associate pastors. We were even youth pastors for a while and itinerant ministers for almost the past 27 years now. And so love the church, love the Lord, love the word, love the ministry, um, and excited to actually be part of of what you're doing on the planet, Steve. And Connie, you're also, you, you're you got a connection with John Maxwell that I think is good to know. Yeah, well, I have been drawn to leadership as far back as I can remember as the seventh grade. And so um, when I started listening to John Maxwell several years ago, I just was uh, just amazed at kind of the two greatest leaders I think right now that in the teaching they do is Steve Backland and John Maxwell. So <laughs> why not have both? So I got certified um, as a leader developer, a coach and a speaker last year through John Maxwell and just, yeah, love to add what he is doing to what we're doing. Yeah, so good. And you're such an important part of our world and we just uh, love you and Aaron and you're going to be a big part also of the Backland Leadership Academy that's coming up in September. We'll say a little more about that uh, shortly. But we want to get into the topic of reigning in life. And you're doing a course. And those of you who, who are listening to the podcast soon after its release, it's starting July 1st uh, here in 2024. And yeah, that course comes from a very powerful Bible verse uh, Romans 5.17, uh, about if we receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we will reign in life. So why don't you talk a little bit about the revelation that you've gotten about that? And yeah, just maybe a little bit about the course as well. Yeah, I, I love this topic so much. I was, like I said, I was uh, born in a pastor's house, been in the church my entire life and didn't actually get saved until I was 21 years old. I thought I was saved. I thought I was just really, really <laughs> bad at it. I was actually a youth pastor when I got saved. So that's a funny story all in of itself. But so I got radically saved. And then, um, you know, after about three weeks of euphoria, thinking I would never say I have never sit again. And just my life was amazing. And then all of a sudden, it's just like my old, uh, my old habits, my own patterns of living and believing just kind of crept back in. And then I spent the next several years trying to earn the affection of the Lord, trying to be something that I actually didn't believe I could be. And so when I stumbled upon the revelation of the fact that we were made the righteousness of God, not, we're not trying wow. to become something, but we were made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It revolutionized my life. And one of the things that the Lord began to show me is it's hard to know what we're supposed to do and what how we're supposed to behave if we don't know how were we how we were originally created and designed. And so he brought me back to Genesis. And in the very beginning, I love the fact that God goes through this whole display of how he created the heavens, he created the earth and all the wonderful things that he did. But when he started talking about things that give life, mm 
that have life in them themselves. He starts talking about that they would reproduce after their own kind. The seed was wow. in themselves to reproduce after themselves. And so he talks about, you know, the, the plants and the birds and the fish in the sea and the cattle and all the things he says that their seed is in themselves and they'll reproduce after their kind. So I always say like when, a you know, when two dogs love each other very much and they come together, <laughs> they will never produce a cat because the seed of the dog is in them and they eternally will reproduce dogs. And then he says, let's let make man in our image after our likeness. And I love the fact that he does it right after he says, who seeds in themselves. And then he says, let's make man like us after our kind and let them reproduce after our kind. And so the seed of God is in us. And we were originally created not as, you know, we weren't created like a dog or a plant. We were created as the offspring of God himself. And then the first thing that he says about us is let them have dominion over all of the works of his hands. And so we were actually created as the God kind like him in essence, like him. And when he breathed into Adam, he breathed his own breath into Adam and Adam then became a living being like him. And so of course we know what happened. We know that Adam sold us out and we didn't just lose our right to his presence. We actually lost the nature of God. We actually lost that and took on the nat nature of the enemy. So when we start talking about reigning in life, a lot of times we'll take the word of God, but then we approach it rather than this invitation to whom what we are, we approach the word of God out instead of Looking at the word of God in light of our redemption, we'll approach the word of God in light of like, oh, now it's our obligation. So now I have to try to be a good fill in the blank rather than recognizing <laughs> that our redemption restored yes. us to our dominion, restored us to sonship. So that's kind of like the beginning of it all is being restored to sons and daughters made in the image of God and being restored to our, di our dominion and authority. Yeah, so powerful and because the the teaching is that, you know, really what I hear you saying is if we don't get our Bible doctrine right, we can't get our life right. Yeah. And and you're going back to the beginning of, okay, what was God's original intent? And Adam and Eve gave the keys of of to the earth and to really kingdom life to the devil. And then Jesus took them back. Yeah. He's given it to us as the church. And it's, it's, you know, Hosea says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yeah. And, and one thing I know about you and just uh, your just history, even with the word of faith movement and which has gotten deep in you. And then, you know, Bethel church here, the revelation of on earth as it is in heaven. And then, you know, the igniting hope message of, wow, any belief system we have that doesn't have hope attached to it's under the influence of a lie. And that includes our doctrines. Mm -hmm. And so you're just uh, you're really uh, opening up something. And I, I just again, you anytime you minister and you're you are a powerful itinerant minister as well. And I highly recommend, hey, if there's somebody out there looking for uh, just someone to ignite a church or ignite <laughs> a, a, a a women's retreat or, or something else, I, I think you're so good at that. And and just uh, yeah, just um even the course, what what are what's the components of the course? It's six weeks long. Is that true? Yep, six weeks long. So our first week is really about an, our original intent, God's original intent. So it's going back to what was what is our makeup? What was our original design? And then we talk about redemption. Like what did Jesus actually do and why did he do it and who did he do it for? And then we talk about the magnificent name of Jesus and we talk about being restored to our authority. And you know, so many times it's like we think what we're, you know, that redemption there is no need for redemption in heaven redemption is for the earth it's for us now and so it's not on the other side that we actually get to walk in live a life that apart from like condemnation you think about you know how the bible says that there's no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus but so many times christians live an extraordinary life of condemnation it's like actually we're actually <laughs> supposed to live uh -oh outside of condemnation here and now because of the finished work of Jesus. And I can remember even approaching, um, you know, just approaching the Bible and reading through the gospels and seeing Jesus and taking him and making his life being like the, the impossibility. Like we see what he does. And, and rather than when anything that I see that Jesus has done, it's actually 
it's an invitation to who and what we are. Like his life is a blueprint for us. So when we read through the gospels, when, when we see him doing something, what it, what it would do if we're actually reading the Bible in light of the redemption, when I see something that Jesus did, it gives me an understanding. Oh, that's how I speak to devils. Oh, that's what wow. I do with sickness. Oh, that's how I treat people. Oh, that's how I lead people. It's like every part of his life wasn't, you know, to show us the extravagant impossibility. It was actually everything that we see him do is an invitation to our present day reality. The Bible says as he is, so are we in the world, not as he was or as someday he will be, but today. And that's really what reigning in life is. It's not how do we survive life and crawl through it to the end. It's how do we yeah. actually thrive today in light of what he has purchased for us. And it's like, we know this, there's things that have been given to us and we're only going to, we're only going to move forward in things that we know belong to us. And like you mentioned yeah. a minute ago, like our, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we won't move forward in what we don't know what is ours. But once I see healing is mine because of Jesus, redemption, provision, peace, wisdom, it's all mine because of Jesus. And that's really what this course is about. It's really just a, it's a scratching the surface that, you know, we you're made for more every part of <laughs> that. We all know we were made for more. And it, so it's each yep. part of it is just a, it's a, it's an invitation. Come and see who you are. Come and see what Jesus means when he says, oh, you received the abundance of grace and my free gift. And then I've made you righteous. Let me show you how to walk on another level of living out this gift of righteousness. Yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, we've done this course before. You've upgraded. You've, you've recorded some new videos. Is that true? Yes. So we recorded some new videos, some new um, interviews as well. So on this course, we have the wonderful Steve Backlund is going to be on there talking about, um, really, you spend a lot of time on um, walking through what it means to be skilled in the word of righteousness. And I love that. We've got Wendy yeah. on there several times. We've done did interviews with all of our staff. I've got the wonderful Pastor Dan Fairley on there talking about grace. And then we've read Dan Fairley from Bethel Church. Yes. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just so good. So it's just chock full of amazing, wonderful people and each one bringing in their own unique um, breakthroughs in different areas of reigning in life. Yeah, faith comes by hearing, and and just you're so convinced of these things. <laughs> I, I listen to you, the, and you also create such a great spirit of revelation around you. And yeah, so I just I highly recommend uh, reigning in life. You can find it on the ignitinghopeacademy.com platform. And how much does it cost to be a part of this, Connie? The course is uh, one forty seven. And for anyone who's listening on here, we'll give them the 20% uh, discount, which is, so if they go in and put in, um, when you're checking out, if you put in RIL20, which is for rating in life, 20%. So RIL20, that would give you, would bring your- Okay, just put that down. code in there. And, mm -hmm. and as always, if you want to be a part of this and finances are a difficulty, you know, just email us at info at igniting hope dot com and let us know what you can do we want everybody to be a part of it you know it, it's summer here in the northern hemisphere and uh, this some of you are looking hey for a jump start in your faith and your beliefs and breakthrough this is going to be really good if it's winter in the southern hemisphere connie and this could just warm things up <laughs> in a, in a in a, in a great hey anything else you want to say about the revelation or, or the or the course. Do you have? Is it videos or is there podcasts or is it mainly videos? And it's videos and podcasts. Um, so both. Uh, so you can watch. And we we designed it to be short, like short little chunks, so that you can do it on the go. Um, and then we also have daily declarations and activations, and then even things for you to take with a group of people and go further. So there's lots. And then we have so much. Um, we just have a lot of bonus content as well. Powerful, powerful. Thank you so much. And yeah, uh, we just uh, bless those of you who just feel a stirring right now that this is what you're to do. Yeah, just check it out. And it's powerful. And Connie, you know, we're also, uh, we just finished the uh, 
getting the onboarding process or making it live for people to be able to apply to be a part of the Backland Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. That is coming up in September. How excited are you about this? Oh my goodness. To me, it's amazing. The world is crying out for leaders. And so that's what this is about, is developing kingdom, godly, transformational leaders. And uh, I couldn't be more thrilled about this. Yeah, so that's, um, I've been talking about it using our eight pillars of leadership, taking the concepts that Connie, you've been such a big part of through the years and uh, what we've been doing with the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, third year students, putting them in a program through us. It's raised up a lot of leaders. We're taking what you and I have done in the team and putting it in an online format. And, and I do believe this, that, that someone is going to spend nine months with us will never be the same again. And so this is, um, this is the biggest thing we've ever done in Igniting Hope. And so information is available now on our ignitinghopeacademy.com platform. And hey, yeah, I'm going to share a few things, Connie. And then I what, I what I would like you to do at the end of this podcast, if just uh, release a few prophetic words that you're hearing for our Igniting Hope family. And, and, and I, I just say this, by the way, I'm going to be in uh, Council Bluffs, Iowa at the end of uh, July. I'll be in Bethel, New York in the beginning of August, Fortuna, California, in uh, August. I'll also be right at the end of August, the beginning of September, Brisbane, Australia, in that region. And Connie, I know you're going to be in Taiwan mm -hmm. in Taiwan August. In August and uh, Guatemala the first weekend of September. Okay, great. And so, yep. If you haven't checked this out at ignitinghope.com, you can go there, sign up for our newsletter, find great resources, declarations, just beliefs to declare. And I, we're here at Igniting Hope Ministries to ignite your hope. There's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. And once people get through hope, circumstances cannot stay the same. Hope's an unstoppable force. I believe after love, hope is the most powerful leadership quality there is, that our, our hope level determines our influence level, and he who has the most hope has the most influence. In increasing hope in our lives is the evidence that we're renewing our mind with truth instead of lies. Decreasing hope uh, is the evidence we're renewing our mind with lies instead of truth. And remember, too, that the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's my strength. It's Connie's strength. And, and I don't need strength at the end of the battle. I need strength in the middle of the battle. And I was thinking today uh, of something that I teach on in my book, uh, Possessing Joy, A Secret to Strength and Longevity. I was thinking about destination disease. And destination disease is the, the belief that I will be joyful when... And we fill in the blank. I'll be joyful when I lose 10 pounds. <laughs> I'll, I'll be joyful when that family situation turns around or my spouse changes this thing. Or uh, I'll be joyful uh, when things get better in my nation. And, and it, it's a destination disease. And I remember the, the Lord saying to me, Steve, if you're not joyful now, the chances of you being joyful in the future are slim. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord, for that that encouragement. And, you know, I, I, I've i never, Connie, I think you'd agree with this. I've never found a convenient season where it's just convenient to be radically joyful. There always seems to be a reason why now is not the best time. Would, would you agree with that uh, yeah. tendency that we have as Christians? Oh, yeah, there's never a joyful time because if it's not... <laughs> Something that you're battling, you know, walking through a battle physically or something's happening in the news or something's happening in your nation or with your kid. There's always something begging for you to just forfeit our right. Yeah, and it's it. And, and so we we just love here at Igniting Hope to to just release the now joy over us. And because it, it is the joy of the Lord is our strength and we don't need strength at the end of the battle. We need strength in the middle of the battle. 
Yeah. And that's just where, where it's at. And I just see a grace coming upon you as you're listening right now. Just a grace for the joy of the Lord, even to become stronger, practical strategies. We increase our joy through thanksgiving by focusing more on what's happening, more on what we have, more on how far we've come than focusing on what we seem to not have or uh, how far we think we need to go. And we also increase our joy through uh, delighting in the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And the context of that verse is the delighter is delighting with unfulfilled desires. Things that he or she wants to see happen that haven't happened yet. They're called desires. And people of hope are, are delighters. They're living while they're waiting. And, and as we live while we're waiting, then, then that really is an indication that we're ready to properly steward the de a desire fulfilled in our lives. Faith people who don't value hope tend to be waiting to live. There's a subconscious or unconscious belief system that I can't really live until this happens or this changes. And so we're delighters. <laughs> and just bless you uh, in that, just with the joy of the Lord, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Hey, Connie, anything you're hearing uh, for the Igniting Hope family that you just love to release? Uh, so Habakkuk 3.17 says, even though the fig tree has no blossoms and there's no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty, and even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, it's getting better, I promise. <laughs> 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 oh, I love this. It says, okay, sorry, my phone just moved. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Wow. Then he goes on to say, the sovereign Lord, oh, he alone is my strength and he makes me sure footed. And it goes on as he lifts up his praise. But I love that. It's like I'm he's looking around saying, oh, I'm seeing all these circumstances that are vying for my attention and my affection yep. that are saying promises aren't coming through. And I'm just saying God is coming through for you. And he saw something that no one else around him saw. He saw the faithfulness of the sovereign Lord who's made a decision. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for your kids. I'm coming for your family. And that's a word right now. The Lord is coming for your health. He's coming to breathe Thank life you. on your family. He's returning your sons and your daughters to you. And I even see provision is looking for you. Provision is mm. comes out of the heart of the father and provision is hunting you down. And I even see a few of you, I just see this picture of you getting up and in the morning and being so aware that dread and fear has left your life. Grace wow. is chasing you yes. down. And this is a season of abundant victory. And I see abundant revelation, even in the things that we've been talking about, abundant revelation and the joy of the Lord, that joy is a resource inside you. And I just see you pulling on the strength of the kingdom. And I see, gosh, I just see you walking in high levels of joy and peace and victory. And I just see some of you, I just saw a picture of somebody riding over your mirror. Triumph is my portion. And that is the season you're walking in. Yeah. Triumph is your portion. Yeah, just as you're you're sharing that, you know, I, I just see, wow, that um, a gift of faith is coming upon people. I think about Hebrews 4, 2, where it says, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but it did not profit them because they did not mix faith with what they heard. And I just see people mixing faith. I even see people rewinding the podcasts and listening to what you just spoke, Connie, over and over again. And it's bring breakthrough. Did you say, um, how did you say that breakthrough is looking for us or well, how'd you word that? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, that's what <laughs> I got. Yes, though. <laughs> it's coming for us. Yeah. And it made me think, I did a podcast uh, uh, a while back, and I can't remember what I titled it. I think it said, Breakthrough is Looking for You. And I talked about the man in the Gospels, the man of the Gadarenes who was demon-possessed and cutting himself and among the tombs. And, and, and Breakthrough was looking for him. Yeah. Jesus was coming in a boat. He had no clue. And, and you think about, okay, who, who 
maybe with our logical mind, who doesn't deserve breakthrough? <laughs> or, you know, or, you know, who is the least likely candidate for breakthrough? Well, I think he's he would probably fit, you know, that list, maybe be at the top of the list. But breakthrough is coming for him. Oh, good. And he didn't even know it. And it came. And some of us, you know, we think we're not worthy of breakthrough or it's just the, the issues are, are, are too big or too long or. You know, breakthrough is coming and it's looking for us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow. It's pursuing us all the days of our lives. And that's so good. Connie, anything else before we wrap up this great podcast? What what a what a joy it's been to have you with us. Yeah, thank you so much. I love being on here with you, but I heard I just heard a couple of little thoughts like, uh, that's probably good for them, but it's not for me because they don't know what I've done. And I just hear um, qualifying things. And I just heard this like, okay, Lord, I said this once to the Lord and I just bring nothing to the table. And he's like, awesome. <laughs> That's perfect. You're yeah. who I'm looking for you. It's never about what we have done and what we can do. It's always about him and his mercy is looking for us. And he's not wrong about you. He knows how to make champions out of us and refuses to give up his hope and what he can do in and through us. So you might as well just say what Mary says, be it unto me, be it unto me. That's the appropriate spot. Be it unto yeah. me, according to the words spoken here. And yes. it's, um, yeah, it, it's so important what we allow ourselves to hear in our self-talk. That's why you're listening to Igniting Hope uh, podcasts and podcasts like this, teachers like this. It's so important what we feed on. Because what we feed on is going to directly determine what we're going to experience. Yeah. Jesus said in Mark uh, 4.24, he says, Be careful what you hear, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And, and so I, I, I want to be so careful. And, and if we're going to reign in life, and I know, you know just what you share is, is things that we need to hear. Because if we're going to experience something higher— we need to believe something higher. And if we're going to believe something higher, we need to hear something higher than what we're feeling and experiencing. And so, yep, yeah, we bless you all. We could go on. I mean, Connie, I could just go off because you stir up faith, but we're going to stop it here. Again, some of you are going to want to go back and listen to the prophetic ministry of what was released a number of times. It's going to get into your spirit. As it gets into your spirit, there's breakthrough in your emotions and then in your circumstances. Yes. Amen. Thanks, Connie. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.